What's up, YouTube? I'm going to do a quick demo of our DAC board display here in our kitchen. And the lighting is bad, so hopefully this turns out good. We originally had the hearth display, which was a 27-inch touchscreen. I had it mounted over here instead. And hardware-wise, that thing was great, um, especially for the price being a 27-inch touchscreen. But software-wise, it was just ugly on the eyes, very white, everything white, no color. Um, it didn't have the functionality we cared about. And so we ended up returning that and building this instead. So what this is, is a 24 inch ViewSonic LED monitor. It's uh, the TD2465 24 inch 1080p IPS touchscreen. Um, it was important to buy a monitor that was gonna be compatible with this. Um, one, because you want something with ports facing I don't know if this is going to focus or not. Ports facing out the side and not towards the back. That way we can have it wall mounted as close to the wall as possible. Uh, the monitor is $350 and the, um, I'll put a link in the description so it's the right one. It's actually the monitor that, uh, that DAC board recommends. So, and one that they've done testing with, I know it works with their own Raspberry Pi based devices. Um, and I'll get to what I'm using here in a second. So it's um, using a $5 cheapest I could find, thinnest I could find wall mount. Um, well, not, I wasn't necessarily looking for the cheapest. I was looking for the one that was the slimmest, closest to the wall. So that ended up working out here. And we wanted some kind of board around it so we could put some cork on it and tack things to it. There's usually a calendar here I got covered now, some artwork and junk. And what I ended up doing was using V-pine boards, attaching them to a hard, I don't know what the board is called. It's like a very thin sheet of cardboard that's dense. I ended up nailing them to that and then whitewashing it with paint to make it a little bit wider looking. Uh, I will say, point out one little mistake here in doing that is that even though these wood boards are probably eight years old and been sitting in my shed and I let them come up to temperature, they have started to curl out a little bit over the past two months. So what I should have done probably was when I attached this to the wall, I did um, a strong bolt here, a strong bolt here into a stud. I probably should have put one underneath each of these cork boards in the corner. So for next time, or if any of these cork things fall off because they're, these are basically off Amazon, I'll put a link to them. They were, um, I want to say quarter inch thick one foot by one foot cork squares with adhesive backing. So I've got those on here and then let's see, let's take a look at what's on the screen here. This is the setup we liked best. We've got time, date, we've got a weekly calendar that I can scroll on because it's a touch screen. Um, I've got some made up calendar events here. It's got the weather for each day going three or four days ahead, I think, and then it stops. Uh, we've got upcoming weather forecast down here, current temperature. And then down here is a scrollable month view calendar, which I didn't really fill out too much for this demo, but um, that's what it looks like. Um, the picture up here is running off a of Google Photos album and it cycles. You can do all kinds of different things. I've got it on a 30 second cycle, I think. So then I've got another photo behind here that I think I just picked the landscape default album um, that's cycling down there. So let me show the computer setup here. Um, this is running Windows 7. You can use the DAC board um, pre-built computers that they have, and those are running on Raspberry Pi, which would be like a version of Linux. This is an old Nook computer, which is basically an all-in-one, very small, low power usage um, PC. This particular one has a Celeron processor, which is like the bottom of the barrel and it's like five or six years old now, but it runs fine for this. Uh, its cables are running behind this little storage thing here to a hole in the wall and coming up behind the monitor behind here. And all I got to do once turning it on is open up Chrome with the shortcut I have on the desktop. And if you have more than one calendar, because this is a $5 a month plan and you can have two of them, what you can do is open up your second shortcut, drag each window out so you have two of them, 
hit the dot 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 in the top. Hold on, let me make it full screen. So if you make it full screen, you're going to have a bar at the bottom and a bar at the top. And to get rid of that, you can hit your dot 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 in Chrome and the full screen button. And then one of the shortcuts in Windows here is to drag in from the side. You can go to your other window. Same thing, dot, 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 full screen. And in doing this, you could have two totally different calendars and easily switch between them. But currently right now, I've just got demo ones, so working with that. And then the only other modification I made too was putting a cheap USB powered LED strip behind it to make it glow a little bit. And that is just plugged into one of the USB ports because this monitor has a USB hub built in. So other than that, we're liking it so far. I'm just keeping an eye on how much this is curling to see if that's gonna be a problem or if I need to bend it back or reattach it in a stronger way. So let me know in the description if you have any questions about my setup and thanks for watching. All right, I'm back here with just a quick demo of how the website works for your DAC board. Um, DACboard.com, um, right here, I'm going into the one I just made. And actually, I also exported a shareable file. So I'll probably try and put that in the description if you want to have a starting point or something to copy. Uh, but essentially, on the right side here, all a DAC board is is a blank slate. And you're adding widgets into layers or blocks, they call them, um, on top of it. And one of the first things you want to do is go to settings at the top, choose the aspect ratio of your monitor. Most of them are 16 by 9, some of them are 16 by 10. Um, I haven't really seen too much else out there that would be a touch screen. You want to choose your monitor's resolution. Mine is 1080p, and I've got mine in portrait mode as opposed to landscape. Once you've done that, you can start putting blocks on by clicking the add block and um, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here, and a lot of them integrate with different services like uh, Google Photos, um, your calendars, different websites, Instagram, Flickr, I mean, there's Reddit, Google Drive, there's even smart home stuff like your Google Nest thermostat. I haven't found anything they'll do the cameras yet, actually. Let me see. I haven't seen anything for security cameras yet, but that would be kind of cool if you could touch something and pop up a window quickly and stuff like weather. And there's different, for some of them, there's like multiple choices too. So you don't have to pick one different way of displaying your data in some cases. And all you do is once you add a block, um, it'll just pop on the screen. You resize it to the shape you want. It will not necessarily resize your content until you go to edit, formatting, and choose your font and any kind of background colors and things like that that you want. And then Things like the calendar and weather, you're going to want to edit, choose your location for, and I can't click any of these without showing a whole lot of personal data, so um, it's not a whole lot I can show here. But, yeah, I mean, it is easy as moving things around and lining things up so they look good. So, yeah, that's just a quick showing of that before I close out the video. Thank you for watching.